So two couples are acting on a cantilevered beam and we need to determine the resultant couple moment, which is the same as like the total of both of them together. So having a look at this, we can see we've got uh, one couple made up of these two five kilonewton forces acting in opposite directions. And then the other couple is formed by these two six kilonewton forces, which are acting in opposite directions. So the first thing to remember is that a moment uh, for a couple, which I'm calling MC, is equal to the force of the couple multiplied by the separation distance, which I'm calling DC. So having a look at these, if I start by just focusing on these five kilonewton uh, forces, uh, what we would need to do if we were to directly apply this based on just these two forces, we'd need to find the separation distance between them, which is this here. Remember that it's like the perpendicular um, distance, so it needs to be a right angle in here. Now, it would take you quite a bit of trigonometry to try and figure out this um, distance directly. So there's an easier way and that is, if I just get rid of this, what we can do is separate this force into a horizontal and a vertical component. And we can see then that we're given like the horizontal distances, um, and, sorry, that's the horizontal distance, and the vertical distances um, to use. So it's going to make our life a whole lot easier and limit the amount of trigonometry we need to do. So if we look at this force, all right, I can draw it as a horizontal component and I can draw this one with its horizontal component so that there is going to form a couple if I then look at the vertical parts right splitting it up okay for this five kilonewton once uh, what we can see is that these red forces are now going to form a couple so I'm going to focus on uh, the horizontal bit first and I'm going to call this MC1 so it's going to be equal to the force, all right, in these blue uh, lines, and that's going to be the horizontal component of the 5. So using the triangle, remember we can just take the ratio of the horizontal side uh, to the hypotenuse. So that would be 3 on 5. So that satisfies the FC bit. The other bit we need is the separation distance. So the separation between these, if we look at their line of action, is going to be like this vertical part in here. And we can see that it's going to be the 0.5 plus 0.5. So that would be a total of one uh, meter overall. Now, the other thing to consider is the direction that the couple is going to act. Is it going to try and rotate clockwise or anti-clockwise? And you can kind of think of it as if you held like your hands here on like a steering wheel and pulled the steering wheel in those directions, right? They're going to try and rotate uh, anti-clockwise against each other. So therefore, it should go in as a positive uh, in the equation. So if we now consider the other part, all right, of these um, forces, which is the vertical. So the size of that would be five, and then we take the ratio of the vertical to the hypotenuse, so four on five. And then we need to multiply by the distance, okay, separating these two. And it's gonna be this distance in here. So that corresponds to the three meters on the diagram. So we multiply by three for the separation distance. And the only other thing to think about then is, again, which way it's going to rotate. So if you were to put your hands on a steering wheel at these positions and pull the steering wheel in these directions, I'd say it was going to rotate this clockwise. And we're going to assume that clockwise is then negative. So it's going to be negative when you pop it in the answer. So if you pop all of this into a calculator, it's going to come out as negative 9. And the units would be kilonewton meters, since we did all our forces in kilonewtons, or here, yep, and our distances were all in meters. All right, so now we're going to look at the other couple, which is the one caused by the six uh, kilonewton forces. I'm just going to delete all of this in here, so we start uh, from scratch. There we go. All right, so it's going to be in our interest again to try and separate these forces into a horizontal and a vertical component, just because we're given all these horizontal and vertical distances to work with. So it's going to limit the amount of trigonometry that we need to do. So let's start by separating. I'll go with horizontal here in green, and then the vertical parts I'll draw in gray here. All right, so I'll call it MC2. So if we look at, say, the vertical part first, okay, the size of it, it's going to be 6. And in this, like, triangle that you can form here, it's 
going to be the opposite side of the triangle that we need the length of, um, corresponding to this length here. And that would mean that you need to use sine in the equation. And then we need to multiply by the separation distance between these two forces in here. So this distance is going to correspond to the 3 meters. So multiply by 3. And then again, thinking about the direction. So these are going to try and rotate anti-clockwise against each other. So we're going to put that in as a positive for the equation. All right. So focusing now on the horizontal parts, all right, it's going to be 6 cos 30 because we want the adjacent side to this angle. And then we need to multiply by the separation distance. So these are the line of actions of the two forces, and it's going to be this distance in here, which corresponds to the total of 1 meter again. So times 1 for the DC. And then thinking about the direction, um, these green forces are going to go. I think if you try to rotate, it's going to kind of go this way, which is clockwise. So that would go in as a negative in the equation. And if you pop this into a calculator, overall it comes out to be 3.8. Again, the units will be kilonewton meters. So we've now simplified uh, the two couples that we've had um, into MC1 and MC2. And all we need to do is now figure out the resultant or the total um, of them both. So I'm going to write this as the sum of our couple moments. So sum of MC is going to equal to the total, um, which I'll call MRC, okay, for the resultant couple. So summing them together, it's just going to be MC1 plus MC2 is equal to that total. And substituting in, it's going to be negative 9 plus the 3.8, keeping the signs since we've already thought about the directions and that's what the signs represent, are equal to the total. And we end up with uh, that coming out to a negative value. It's going to be negative 5.2 kilonewton meters. So we should probably answer in terms of a direction rather than having the, the negative value just to be proper. So we could say that this is 5.2 kilonewton meters in the negative rotation direction, which is clockwise. Okay, so I've drawn that in. So that would be our final answer for the resultant uh, couple moment that's produced by this system here um, of the two couples um, side by side. So that's all there is in terms of this question.